it up on one. We're going in. Five, four, three, two, one, and go, Mike and Cuban. been involved with jazz music and then with vocal jazz here at Ithaca? Well, I was fortunate enough to grow up with jazz music. Both my parents and my older brother are heavily involved in jazz, and so I got to grow up listening to people like Ray Charles and Wes Montgomery and Nat King Cole, so that was pretty much all I listened to all through grade school and junior high and high school. Then I got a little more into R&B. Uh, I've been in vocal jazz since 1987, my third year with the group, and I just enjoy it very much. <laughs>
they were swinging, I was digging the duke, singing along with the fundamental, absolutely necessary thing that makes the whole world sing.
College, I had I knew Dave and um, talked to him about coming singing to the group, so I auditioned and started singing with the group. Um, rehearsals for vocal jazz are they run like a regular chorus rehearsal, or how how do they go about? Not our chorus. Um, the rehearsals are run quite differently. The, we rehearse on Monday nights from six to eight, and usually the first half of the rehearsal is the vocalists by themselves and then the second half of the rehearsal we get together with the instrumentalists and run the numbers that we worked on and um, the rehearsals are, are really intense yet 
they're kind of laid back enough that we can be relaxed enough to do it, and, and Dave creates a really good atmosphere to learn music. I understand you went on tour recently down towards Washington, D.C. What was that like? Fun. <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was a really, any kind of tour is always a great experience, and especially with a small group. And uh, it was a really musically wonderful experience for everybody and a good personal experience for everybody, I think, as well. Get to know each other a lot better and musically bond together. of the Vocal Jazz group here at Ithaca. When was Vocal Jazz started? Well, we started it actually in 1973. Uh, there was another professor uh, by the name of Dr. Jack Bullock who I'd been working with, and uh, the two of us started it together. Were there always two groups of Vocal Jazz? No, actually this year is the first year that I've done that. It's kind of an experiment. We have a lot of people that are interested in singing Vocal Jazz. And so uh, I started the jazz choir to accommodate those people who wanted to sing jazz. What kind of musical background do you personally have? Oh, gee. <laughs> I come from a family that was very musical. My father was a minister. My sister played the piano in sort of a gospel style. And so it was an expectation that I would get up and sing in church. And so I started singing in church, really. And then, in, as some of the other students said, I sang through high school and played trumpet and played string bass. And uh, when I went to college, I started playing with a jazz trio. I played string bass and continued that all the way through college and then played professionally for about 20 years. How, when did you first get involved with the vocal jazz group here at Ithaca? Well, we, in 1973 is when the group started. And uh, it was called the Jazz Rock Ensemble at that time, Susan. Uh, and we kind of moved into vocal jazz when uh, Dana Wilson, who was a professor in the music school, came on the scene as a new teacher. And he's a great jazz piano player and, and turned out to be a good friend who was very helpful. And he and I were asked to write a series of arrangements, vocal jazz arrangements, for Columbia Pictures. And that really got the whole thing rolling in terms of vocal jazz as opposed to jazz rock and pop music. Currently, uh, what type of audition process is used for the vocal jazz groups? Well, uh, two different processes. processes. Sometimes we do it as a separate audition with the vocalist 
coming in and singing for me with, a, with an accompanist, and they sing either a ballad or an up jazz tune with some scatting. And then I do an ear training exercise to see how well I can hear and remember pitches, oral memory. And then I'm looking for stage presence and their ability to express themselves, but most important is the quality of their voice. Um, so when you, when you decide on a performer, you're not just looking for a good voice. They have to have some sort of a personality? They have to have good personality. That's very important. Uh, but they also have to have the kind of voice that I'm looking for to blend in the group. Uh, there are a lot of wonderful singers who audition for the group, and I don't take them, not because they're not good musicians or good singers, but because uh, they don't have the kind of sound I'm looking for. Do you personally select the music for the group to sing, or does the group as a, as a whole select the music? Well, the group as a whole does not select music. I select the music. However, the group really exists as a laboratory for young writers, and so a lot of the material that we do is arranged and composed by some of the people in the group, and when they come up with a piece that they want to arrange, why then will do that in performance. So they do have a say in what is performed and arranged for the, for the ensemble. I understand that last year a vocal jazz album was, was completed. What was that experience like? Well, it's the third album I've done with the vocal jazz ensemble, and uh, it was a good experience. It's always fun to work in a, in a studio setting because it's very intense, and you're together for many hours working on a very intense project, and Everything has to be right. It's not like a, a live performance where certain things go by and they get covered up, up by applause and, and so on. In the studio situation, you may go up to 10 takes to do a piece to get it right. And it's a very intense situation, but it's a very good learning experience, I think, for the students because a lot of our students have gone on as professional, mu professional musicians and they come back and tell me that the studio experience that they've had has set them up for uh, a career in music, like the New York Voices. Those people went through some of those studio experiences. How did you decide on the title, Autumn in New York? Uh, Autumn in New York is one of the tunes on the uh, album, happens to be one that I arranged. And uh, in the other albums, we chose a, a piece from the album that would serve as a title tune. And Autumn in New York is kind of what Ithaca is about. It's a beautiful time of the year and a beautiful piece of music. So Autumn in New York became the consensus title. Is, is there a plan in the future for another album? Not right now. <laughs> doing the last album was hard, but uh, if the opportunity presents itself, we'll do another album. We've done three. This one, Autumn in New York, is uh, probably will be the last. What are the group's plans for the future? Well, they're pretty much the same as this year. Um, we take at least one tour every year, and this year we went to Washington and performed in several different places. Um, kind of an exciting experience because we had an opportunity to perform with the Navy Choir and the Navy Jazz Ensemble, and we had an opportunity to uh, sing for a National Choral Directors Conference. Uh, it's always fun to perform for your peers. And we'll probably be doing some things like that next year. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll take another trip to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. <laughs>
to myself What a wonderful world If you're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. Heather Blair. Heather, hi. Did you start performing in any other group here at Ithaca? Yes. Um, I started out in the chorus. Well, I started out in two at the same time. Um, my freshman year, I got into vocal jazz and the chorus. And since then, I've been in um, almost every vocal group that you can possibly be in here, except for the Madrigals. I've been in choir, women's chorale, and the chorus, and vocal jazz. This is my third year in vocal jazz. Um, when you were on tour recently, how do you get yourself 
ready to do concert after concert and not make it seem very repetitive? <laughs> um, it's not easy. It's, it takes a lot of energy and you have to be able to think of a fresh idea um, for each one and for each song you have to try to make it new again for the new audience that you're um, you know, performing for. It's not easy, but um, the fact that you get to become a kind of a family touring with everyone makes it fun and so it's not too difficult to keep doing the same thing over and over because the people make it great. Do you personally plan to make jazz a part of your career after Ithaca? Yes, I do. It's not going to be probably my mainstream thing, but uh, I do plan on continuing my vocal jazz singing. Um, maybe I'll just do some work in pubs or whatever on the side, solo stuff. Um, actually, I have kind of a dream to put together a small group, sort of like this vocal jazz ensemble, and go with it. Um, I've learned a lot here from Dave Riley, and I'd like to continue with it for the rest of my life, because I enjoy it. How long have you been involved with jazz and jazz music? Well, actually, um, I've been involved since junior high when I played in a jazz band, but that was piano, and I never really sung in a group till I got up here and I auditioned my second year. Up here, and this, this is my second year. So, about two years in vocal jazz. Did you start performing in another group here at IC? Yes, I did. My freshman year, I sang in the women's chorale here, and I'll be singing that. This will be my third year, and we're just getting to ready to go on tour this, this next week um, down to Washington, D.C., and sing at um, the MENC National Conference down there. How is that different from vocal jazz? There are no guys, <laughs> for one thing. Um, the rehearsals for... The, the rehearsals for women's crowd are so intense sometimes. Not that vocal jazz isn't, but there's always a little bit more of a laid-back feeling with the vocal jazz, which it's a nice way to relax sometimes at the end of a long day and thinking towards the rest of the week that you have to get through.
Hi, I was wondering how long have you been involved with music in general? Um, since early elementary school I started taking piano lessons when I was about seven and then I kept moving on to different instruments like the trombone and the violin and I went through quite a few and then I decided I liked to sing. What kinds of things do you do during the vocal jazz rehearsals? Are they, uh, do you just do set songs or do you do a lot of improvising too? Uh, we do a lot of work with the songs, and then we do exercises in improvisation over, um, you know, jazz chords and also blues. We do movement, and uh, we work a lot on blend so that no individual voices are sticking out. I understand that you do other kinds of performing. What, what does that involve? Um, I'm involved in a lot of different styles of music. I just really enjoy it. Um, I play piano and clarinet. I've been in Dixieland bands and jazz bands playing piano, and I like to sing folk quite a bit, and classical too. I understand that you went on tour down to Washington, D.C. 
what kinds of feelings did you have as you prepared for concert after concert? Well, it was, uh, for me, it was mostly that I had to do a lot of grunt work and get all the equipment in and out, and, uh, but that I had to be really aware of every different room that we had, that we were in, and how differently it would sound from previous rooms we've been in, um, and how I can get the best overall sound out of the group from in, in every particular acoustical environment. How do you prepare for a concert as, as a sound engineer? How do you get ready for that? Well, we spend a lot of time in the practices, um, just working with the singers on mic technique, and I work on balancing, getting the right balance. I listen to a lot of jazz now, and uh, so that I can get the sounds that we hear on albums and get that in the concert.